Hallo, mein Name ist Linde Fröhlich. Ich bin die künstlerische Leiterin der nordischen Filmtage Lübeck und verantwortlich für die Auswahl des Spielfilmwettbewerbs und des Dokumentarfilmprogramms. And I'm very happy that I'm here to talk about what is, in my opinion, the most heartbreaking and heartwarming film of the festival. And I'm also very happy to have two guests. And it's easy, it's Katrine and Katrine. So please welcome the director, Katrine Philp, Hello. and the producer, Hi. Katrine Saalström from Good Company Hi. Pictures in Copenhagen. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you very much. <laughs> Katrine Saalström. <laughs> Your company, uh, I think it uh, specializes in documentary filmmaking. Um, we have seen great films from your company. So um, what, uh, how do you approach or choose your project? Is it a company decision or do you follow the personal di uh, decisions of the filmmakers when you choose a project? Well, actually, Good Company Pictures is special in that way that it's uh, it's not owned by me only, it's owned, owned by another producer and then three directors, also Katrina Philp. Um, mm -hmm. So uh, it's a it's a company we we established together to be more close um, with director producer more close in the everyday and in developing new projects so that the producer and director are developing the projects from the very beginning. So in that sense, we we produce the projects that we can agree upon. It's very often an idea from the director and then the producer steps in and, and helps develop the idea. But we also sometimes uh, invite directors Uh, who are not part of the company to do films with us. And in those instances, it's mm -hmm. it's based very much on the initial idea and often of a, a little research shooting that has been done already. And we tend to do character-driven films that take place now and um, has sort of a social issue theme um, many times, but not necessarily. And how did you come up for this special project? How did you hear about Good Grief? It started when I heard a podcast from This American Life, uh, where they had an episode taking place at uh, in Utah at a place called The Sharing Place, which is sort of similar to the place we ended up filming, where children uh, can attend in peer-to-peer -peer support if they've lost a, a parent or a sibling. And uh, when I heard that, I was really struck by the, the directness and, and, and the boldness uh, with which the children were talking about death and, and their grief. Uh, and it, it almost shocked me a little. And I, I passed it on to Katrina Philp, who was already interested in, in doing something about children and grief. And when we both heard this episode, we started researching about the different group support uh, that, that exists in, in the United States. And the reason why we did it in the United States was, bo was both because it seemed like the, the access was, was um, a little bit easier than here in Denmark, because we, of course, also have group support groups in um, grief support groups in, in Denmark, but uh, it's It tended to be more easy, accessible in the United States. And then also because, as you can see in the film, uh, Good Grief and similar places, they have different rooms with activities for the children where they can um, play in a hospital room or they have big sandboxes with the small coffins they can play with. And they have this, what they call a volcano room where they can act out um, any aggression or frustration they have. And that, of course, is very um, cinematic in its, uh, from, from the start, which, which appealed to us naturally. Yeah. 
and a question to the other Katrine Philp. <laughs> uh, so um, you accompany these uh, little guys for, I think, uh, over uh, the period of one year. And how, uh, how did you introduce yourself to them? And uh, how did you get so close to these great persons? Well, as Katrina said, um, after we uh, did, um, found Good Grief in New Jersey, we uh, contacted Joe Primo, who is the CEO, and um, and his he was very interested in the in, in the film, and he invited us over right away. So uh, I traveled there with my husband, uh, who's the cinematographer of the film, and we. Uh, we, we met good grief. We met a lot of families there. And after just, I, I don't know, but maybe just one or two days, we were absolutely sure that there was a film to be discovered there because it was so uh, touching and, uh, and they, good grief, they just opened up the doors for us. So we felt very welcomed and uh, the family was very curious about the, the film and a lot of them wanted to uh, be in the film as well. So, we had a very close collaboration with uh, Good Grief and Joe Primo, and, and they helped us find the children that we are following in the film. We, have, we are following six uh, f um, children in the film and, um, and their families. So we have both filmed at Good Grief, but also in the homes of them. Uh, and as you said, we filmed over a course of a year and uh, and at one point we decided that we wanted to be closer to the children and to the families because it's it's um it's it was not easy to go back and forth over the atlantic all the time to to film when we were ready to film them we wanted to to be there when they were ready to be filmed so we actually decided my husband and i to to go there and to bring our two kids um so we came there as uh, a family instead of coming there as a, a, a film crew. And I think that also opened up the doors and the hearts in the, in the families. And we became friends with them. And our kids played with the children in the film while we were not filming. So um, it, it all kind of uh, um, merged together. And um, yeah. Yeah, that's a real family project. And I could very well imagine that this helps when you get part of the whole interaction. Nevertheless, the children are quite small, five or six years old or five to 10. So, uh, and, and uh, that's a ver very big effort for them to, to open up and to talk not only to other children and uh, to the people of good, good grief, but uh, um, also to more people, so and and to to stay concentrated on that. So how did you manage? Yeah, well, um, my husband, the cinematographer, is very good at connecting with people, and he just um, was very close to them all the time. And he was like, he he made them play with the camera, and they were crawling all over him, uh, and 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 you know. Uh, it, it just took a couple of days and they were very used to the camera. So, so it was not a problem at all. Uh, what also helped as Katrina described that they have these different rooms and it's at Good Grief, they, they focus very much on the holistic way of dealing with grief. Um, so playing was essential for them. And, uh, and I think that um, it, it is, I can imagine it could it could be very uh, difficult for a child to come in and talk about their feelings every Thursday night at uh, eight to nine, uh, just sitting in a circle and have a conversation. So I, I think it was very um, clever of them to to uh, to use play as a tool mm -hmm. because then all the conversation came naturally to to them, and we were actually just when we were at good grief, we were just filming them. And we were just trying to to um, 
trying to get the magical moments. Uh, so, yeah. And, and, and when they were at home, we were, we, we could work more with the scenes and we could talk to them about how to create the scenes. And for me, it's very important to, uh, in, to, to have a very transparent uh, process. Uh, where I invite all my participants to discuss the scenes that we are we are making, and and uh, so everything happened uh, in close collaboration with with them. And and of course, some of the, them are very young, um, and uh, but 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 it it I don't know, but it it just felt very natural for them. I think having us around. So they were very calm and relaxed and, and just, it was very important for me that we were not press, pressing them too much, putting a, too much pressure on them. Um, but still we of course wanted to um, have the scenes that we were aiming for. Mm -hmm. So that, that was also why we choose to have different um, characters in the film. So we were not just putting a pressure on one family. Mm -hmm. Uh, but also because we wanted to show grief in in, uh, in different stages, and uh, that was easy, more easy to to do when we had more children. Mm. Yes, um, <clears throat> with the families you see different uh, different kinds of dealing with grief, especially at uh, uh, high. Um, at, at Christmas, for example, which, which is a very emotional holiday, um, did you uh, uh, talk to the, f to the families before? If you participate uh, in their celebrations, or uh, did they propose to you to join them? <coughs> mm. um, I yes, of course. I asked them if we could if if we could celebrate Christmas with them. Mm. And we were in Morristown with the uh, the family, with you know my husband and my children. So we were uh, there, and we were filming them in the Christmas uh, arrangement. And and of course, they invited us in because we were also friend of the family, and they just felt that it was really um, fun to have us around. I think, um, and it was important for us to get because. Uh, at Christmas time and Easter and and birthdays and all these kind of uh, uh, celebration times, it's it's mm. the grief is very present. Mm. Yeah, so mm. it's much more intense in these moments. Um, exactly. Uh, my favorite is little Peter, who's six years old and who lost his father and his mother. And now he's stuck with Uncle CJ. And I really hope that uh, everybody got the kind of uh, Uncle CJ. It's a, he's a wonderful person. <laughs> yes. <clears throat> um, I am. Um, well, it was very important for us to leave all the children in the film uh, at a good place uh, because they all had families mm -hmm. there with them and there was uh, nobody was alone and mm -hmm. everyone was loved. Mm -hmm. um, so that was not our uh, focus. It, it was uh, Im important for us to, um, to show that uh, mm -hmm. there were some other adults taking care of them. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, so they were not alone. Yes, it's a film about sharing um, emotions and thoughts. And um, I think that especially in times uh, uh, like we are living in right now, this is a v very important message. Um, I think you premiered uh, the film in Austin, Texas at the festival there. And uh, as far as I heard, it was very, very well received. And uh, did you travel a lot or travel in? <laughs> uh, <laughs> did the film travel a lot since then <clears throat> to different Between countries? And yeah, I can answer that. Yes, uh, it's, it's true. We premiered at South by Southwest and it actually won the main prize. So it was very re well received. 
Unfortunately, we couldn't go because that was just when the pandemic struck the United States and they had to, to close uh, the festival for the attendance. Uh, and since then, we've been traveling on uh, quite a lot of festivals, but all of them, of course, uh, online. So, um, but it has. So we miss interacting with the audience because we've done a lot of Q and A's, uh, and we get some reviews. And uh, yesterday, actually, it, the the film won a prize in Japan uh, called the Unicef Prize, which was also so great. We're very happy about that. Uh, and Caprini was at the awards online. <laughs> so it's uh, it's in this uh, other reality that we all live in right now. It's, in that sense, it's, it's traveling on festivals as our films normally do, but we just miss the interaction and the meeting with the audience and the reactions. And um, yeah, we hope for, for that on, on the next film. <laughs> Has it already been released in Denmark or aired on TV or? No, uh, we it, it will be in January in Denmark. Mm -hmm. In the cinemas or? Uh, no, we will have a few uh, mm -hmm. what we call event screenings. There will yeah. be a few screenings yeah. around the country, but it's uh, it's uh, it's leading up to the release on in on television. Mm. Yeah, I wish you good luck for that. And there are still screenings uh, at the Nordic Film Days, also online. And I would really hope that this film would be available in, in Germany as well to support groups and people who work with these young children to overcome grief and uh, uh, to learn how to deal with all these desperate feelings. So I keep my fingers crossed that the film is also be very well received in Germany. So, thank you. Thank you so much. <laughs> thank we you. Will. And next time too. we see each other in person. We will. We will. <laughs> yes, <laughs> definitely. Okay. Bye-bye. Okay. And bye. thank bye. you so much. Thanks. Bye. <laughs>